Hello and welcome to today's reflection from Clive's Church. I'm Sylvia Mann. Some days ago, a friend sent me an email with the subject heading, so you think it's all over. It was actually light-hearted and related to the content of the email. It set me thinking, however, about times in our lives when we can truly think it's all over. Times when we're facing challenges, the serious illness of a loved one, bereavement, at our wits end with a teenager who appears to be going off the rails, and when we are burdened with sin, disobeying our loving Heavenly Father over something we've said or done or failed to say or to do. We feel like giving up. We can recall people in the Bible in situations where most of us would have given up or given in. I'm drawn to one such story, which not only shows our need to be obedient to our Father God, but just as importantly, that God is in control every step of the way. And in this story, his concern, his mercy and his grace were revealed. If the name Jonah is mentioned, I guess most of us would think of the whale and perhaps recall that Jonah disobeyed God and went in completely the opposite direction to where God told him to go. Let's refresh our memories. Jonah's story is told in the Old Testament. He was a prophet and he may have been a member of the company of prophets mentioned in the ministry of the prophet Elisha. Unlike the stories of other prophets in the Old Testament, the four chapters about him do not contain any of his prophecies. The story is solely about Jonah's own experiences. He lived between about 785 and 760 BC and ministered under Jeroboam II, probably one of Israel's most powerful kings. Israel's tyrannical enemy at the time was Assyria and within 50 years Nineveh its greatest city would become its capital. We learn from the prophet Nahum that the people of the city were guilty of evil plots against God. They exploited the helpless, exercised cruel acts of war and were into idolatry, witchcraft and prosecution. No wonder when God instructed Jonah to go to Nineveh to warn the Assyrians that unless they repented, they would receive judgment. Jonah hightailed it in a completely different direction. He hated the powerful and wicked Assyrians. And so he ran away to Joppa, boarded a boat bound for Tarshish, and told the crew that he was running away from his God. God sent a violent storm and the boat threatened to break up. The sailors cried out to their own gods and threw cargo into the sea to lighten the boat. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone below and was in a deep sleep. The captain woke him up and pleaded with him to call on his God to calm the storm. The sailors then cast lots to find out who was responsible for the storm and the lots fell to Jonah. In answer to their questions of sheer panic, Jonah tells them who he is and that he worships the God of heaven who made the sea and the land. With the sea getting rougher and rougher, they ask him what he has done and what they should do to calm the storm. 
Jonah tells them to throw him into the sea. However, the sailors did their best to row back to land, but this was useless with the heightening storm. They began crying out to Jonah's God because they did not want to kill an innocent man. However, they eventually threw Jonah into the sea, which calmed immediately. The captain and his crew were in fear of the Lord and offered up sacrifices and made vows to him. In the midst of this crisis situation, Jonah's honesty as to who he was and what he believed impacted on the crew. As the old hymn says, God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. The Bible then tells us that the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah and he was inside the fish for three days and three nights. I think having gone through that horrendous experience, I would have collapsed in a heap with sheer exhaustion. But Jonah prayed, and this it can be found in chapter 2. Here are two of the most significant verses. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. I will sing a song of thanksgiving. I will sacrifice to you what I have vowed. I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. What a dramatic change in this man who was running away from God. Nothing is too difficult for God to put right. Jonah came to God and that's what we need to do. We may not end up inside a fish and as the Bible says, be vomited out onto dry land. But our God can sure haul us up out of the darkest situations if we let us and stand us back on solid ground. Jonah went on to fulfil his mission. The people of Nineveh, including their king, repented and God had compassion on them and did not bring about the destruction he had threatened. Amazingly, Jonah could not cope with this. He was angry that God had spared Nineveh this was because at that time, the Jews did not want to share God's message with other nations. They had forgotten that their purpose was to be a blessing to other nations. In the final verses of chapter 4, through the provision of a vine to shelter Jonah, and then the provision by God of a worm, which caused the vine to wither and die, so that Jonah suffers under the scorching sun, God explains to him why he had such a concern and compassion for Nineveh. God has that compassion and concern for each and every one of us. He is a gracious and compassionate God slow to anger and abounding in love. Let's pray together. Loving Father, when we behave like Jonah did, help us to turn to you, to be honest with you and seek your forgiveness and your guidance. Help us to respond with obedience. Thank you that you love us with a love beyond our understanding. As we are blessed with your love, help us to share it and the knowledge of you with others without discrimination. 
I hope you'll enjoy the song I've chosen, You Raise Me Up, by Josh Groban and the a cappella cover. Bye for now. <laughs>